Hey guys, it's Archimedes Jerry. Back with you here on Tiki 7-1. Today we're doing the big drip irrigation video for the vegetable garden. And this is going to be an in-depth video because I want to really explain to you how I do my drip irrigation. It's a really simple process. Uh, just a few things that you need. And you don't necessarily need as much as I've got laid out here. But I'm going to walk you through everything, kind of tell you what I'm doing. My plan here is to actually go from the greenhouse where I've already got water set up. I'm going to run a line out and I've got some aqua joes. Let me show you what those look like. This is called an aqua joe and it's got an inlet and an outlet and a place to hang your hose. Very convenient. You just plunge it down into the soil. It's got a heavy base on it and a spike. A couple of spikes really. Rig up your water from the backside. So I'm going to run that line out from the greenhouse over there and I'm going to come right in, plug into that. And then what I've done for both of my aqua joes, because I have two out in the garden, I want to kind of space them out. I've got a four-way fitting here so that I can hook up garden hose. I can have, I can just fill up a bucket if I want. But on this one right here, I'm going to run the line out the rest of the way to the garden. So I'm going to take a mainline drip tube and I'm going to run it all the way up the side of the garden and around over to this other aqua joe that I have up here. And this is actually uphill from the rest of the garden. Now you'll also notice that I uh, took my drip tubing, which comes in a really tight wound bundle, and I stretched it out uh, about 24 hours ago. That way the sun could get to it and get rid of some of that memory there. Now over here on this Aqua Joe, I've got the same four-way fitting hooked in. We'll come into the back with the drip tubing. What I'm going to do here is I'll have me a garden hose, but I'm also going to have a, another spigot right here so that I can go out into my what's going to be my cornfield here where I'm killing off the grass and so I'll be able to do a separate drip line for the corn and then this one right here I think is what we're going to use to feed the beds and so from this point is where I'm actually going to start the drip and I'm going to come down in I'm going to uh, I'm going to tee off and then I'm going to have two lines running down both beds here I've got some various tools here and some silicone since I'm going to be punching a hole through the greenhouse. Got a digital timer. Now I love the dig timers because if you get the right one, you can set it to water up to four times a day, as little or as much as you want, seven days a week, or you could just set it to water once a week, one time a day, and as little as five minutes. But with drip irrigation, you're putting that water exactly where you need it. That's another fantastic thing about doing drip is you can actually reduce your weed pressure because you're only watering the root zone. The other thing that I've got here is a backflow preventer. Now I've already got one hooked up to the main house where it goes into the greenhouse, but a little extra protection is not a bad idea. I've got a pressure regulator here. Now this is a 25 PSI pressure regulator. And then right here, this is a basic water filter. You want to actually filter out any contaminants that might get into your drip system because you've got real fine emitters. And so that is going to protect the emitters and hopefully keep them from getting jacked up and blocked up. I'm going to come off of that with my Haas Fertigator. I've got one for the tropical garden, but this is going to be incredibly important in order to be able to put food right there at the root zones for all of the plants. Calcium nitrate, all kinds of stuff that we can use this for, uh, even to prevent blossom end rot. The other thing I've got is I've got some screw-on starch. Now with this, what you do is you just wiggle that tube in and it creates a watertight seal. And so we can screw that right onto a standard uh, faucet. This is a termination. And what you do is you put wiggle your hose into this one and you can cap it off and you can actually terminate your main drip line. And you can also open this up, flush it out uh, at the end of the year and winterize it. But the other thing that I'm going to be able to use this for is on the Aqua Joes, I've got standard uh, uh, female fittings. This has a male so I can hook that line in and then screw it right into the back of it. You're going to want some uh, pipe thread tape. A lot of these connections are going to be under pressure at all times, so buy the good stuff. Spend a few extra bucks, get the uh, professional strength plumbers pipe thread tape, and you'll be good to go. I've also got a whole bunch of stakes where we can stake that mainline drip tubing into the ground. And then for routing the main drip line, I've got uh, some T's, and it's the same process for all these. You just wiggle them in, and then you're watertight. And then I got a ton of elbows. I'm going to try to keep this drip tubing at ground level until it gets to a bed, and then I'm going to I'm going to elbow up, and then I'm going to run some line, and I'm going to elbow over. I'm going to run it through the bed, and then it's going to be the opposite process coming out of the bed. And so I'm going to do that over and over. That should be nice and time consuming, but it's also going to make it to where I can still walk around the beds. I've also got some quarter inch drip line here and what you do with that is you can uh, pop a hole in your main line 
you can come off with one of these barb connectors into it plug right in and then you can use as much line as you need you can use this for pots but you can also use it uh, if your main line is far away you can bring bring your drip emitter right to the root zone especially important in the case of like squash zucchini things like that that really don't like to get wet leaves especially when it gets hot and humid you can put that water right into the root zone and that can help save you from getting uh, downy mildew or white powdery mildew and I've got a couple of different types of emitters here. Uh, this is a 360 emitter that you can set the strength to. And then I've also got pressure compensating emitters. If I had a pressure problem, I might want to use this because what it's going to do is it's going to allow the pressure in the line to build up and then it's only going to, um, it, it's actually going to compensate for uh, varying pressure. That way all of your items in the bed get equal watering. I really do like these. Now this has got it comes with its own stake. It's already hooked up with a deal and you can just plug into that main line. And what this is is a 360 degree fan sprayer. You can set it to like next to no feet or all the way up to like 10 feet if I remember right. Quite a bit of distance that you can set these for. And so I think with about two of these on the standard bed I can water most of the bed. Uh, we will test that out and see how it works. You just adjust just the power of the spray right there. I'll have a link to all of this drip stuff down below in the show more or the description section below the video and in my pinned comment. So y'all come on into the greenhouse and let's get started here. And so this is where my water comes in into the greenhouse. I've got heat in here so I never really have to worry about it freezing up or doing anything like that. On this first four way here I've already got drip systems set up in the greenhouse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to elbow off right here though. I've already got the elbow in and I've got one of those connectors in. I'm going to run my line over, elbow up, and I'm going to actually take it over the doorway and then out the side of the greenhouse. Now when you're measuring to make your cuts on your mainline tubing, if you're trying to fit it into an area, don't just measure from the end of this to the end of this. You've got to allow probably you know a good, uh, a good bit inside of each of these so that you have uh, room to wiggle it in. So kind of account for that when you're, when you're making your measurements before you cut something off here. I'm gonna come off with a little more than I need to cut. PVC cutters come in really handy for this part. Nice clean cut. And you definitely want a nice clean cut there. When it comes to putting this tubing on, it's just as easy as wiggling it back and forth and pushing. Once you get that wiggle back and forth and seated really good, she'll be watertight. And so I've got the elbow on. I'm all the way up against my wood there. <laughs> what? I'm going to cut off right about there. I don't do any measuring when I'm doing drip. Other than eyeball and feeling, feel fitment. Feel, feel fitment. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to... We go our own in there. And so now I'm going to be able to pull this line down and get a good measurement here where I want it and cut it. And we just wiggle her in. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Once you got her in, you don't want her laying uh, like this, so I'm going to take some more strap hangers and we're going to make it nice and clean and make it look good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a hole over here on the side of the greenhouse and then I'll take my tubing and I'll route it in from the outside over to there. We'll make our fittings. I'll secure it to the 2 by 4 We'll do our outside fittings and caulk it up. All right, now that we've got the elbow in, I'm going to come down with a little bitty section of tubing and then I'm going to use one of these. Now this is a half inch universal coupler and all you have to do is push that tubing right into here. But what I'm going to be able to do when I want to winterize the outside drip irrigation and disconnect it from the greenhouse and avoid freezing, I can blow the line down, do all kinds of stuff like that, is what I'll be able to do is I can unscrew the drip line going out to the garden, disconnect it, put an air compressor in there and blow the lines uh, clear of water and winterize it that way. But then I'll also be able to take this part that's going back up into the greenhouse, cover it up, keep stuff from crawling in there, and, uh, and winterize it.
So that T that I just put in is actually going to uh, split and it's going to take, uh, take one main line uninterrupted all the way down and up to the top of the beds. The elbow is coming up into that Aqua Joe and once again this is a male thread fitting, three quarter inch fitting that can go into like a garden hose or anything else. I'm going to wrap this up with some uh, plumber's tape and then make that connection there, wiggle it in and, and screw it in. When you do your plumber's tape, a handy thing to do is to put what it is you're wrapping in your left hand. We want this tape to go in the same direction that we're going to be tightening it down. And so I'm going to hold right there and I'm going to give this thing some good wraps. This is going to be under constant pressure all season long. I want to, this is like extra insurance just to make sure I'm not having leaks. And I want you guys to be extremely careful when you're going plastic into brass. Guess what's your stronger? <laughs> So you make sure you're not cross-threaded at all. If it binds up on you when you first start it, just back it out and start over. I'll come through here in a bit with a crescent and maybe give it a half turn. And then once we get everything set up, we're going to run all through the garden and do leak checks and all that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this fitting hooked up here just like we did on the other one. When you go to put this stuff on, if uh, you can wiggle it back and forth left and right, but I've found that if you take it in kind of a circular deal, it'll seat in there and then you can start getting it in. And shove it in there. Shove it in. Once I got her seated real good here, what I want to do is go ahead and do a pressure test on this line up to this point. I know I've had a little bit of mulch material possibly get in there, uh, shavings and things like that. So we'll do a blowout of this line, get any contaminants out of it, any burrs. We'll make sure our water is good and clean before we come into the manifold and we start dealing with the timer and the filter and all of that stuff and especially before we get out to those emitters. So we'll give her a water test now. No leaks there. Got no leaks there. When I open my faucets up, I either turn them all the way on or all the way off. That way there's no doubt. Here comes the air. Woo! Yeah, buddy. We needed to clean that bad boy out. Look at there. The spigot in the greenhouse had been closed forever. Before I hook up my backflow preventer, my pressure regulator, timer, filter, all of that stuff. I'm going to get me a five gallon bucket here and I want to know exactly uh, how long it takes to fill up this five gallon bucket. We're going to need that information when we hook up the fertigator. So I'm going to do that now here. And then I'm going to start a timer. Okay, so it took me a minute and 35 seconds to fill up five gallons. So let's do some calculating. Okay. When you're running this fertigator for your system, 
If you've got a drip system that does less than 120 gallons per hour, uh, you may need a flow disc. And what that's going to do is it's going to act like a venturi uh, and speed up the, the, uh, the volume and the pressure. So a minute and 35 to fill it, do five gallons. Let's call it uh, 1.5. If I divide 60 by 1.5, I get 40 units. If I go 40 times five, well, that's 200 gallons an hour. I don't have to have flow disc. <laughs> There's actually three different colored discs and they got you hooked up uh, with their instruction manual. I'll have a link for this down below as well, but I have really enjoyed this thing in the tropical garden. It's made it so easy to feed everything and I'm gonna be able to do the same with my plants. I'll give you a prime example. Let's say that I uh, start running into some blossom end rot issues. Well, shucks, I could put some calcium nitrate in this thing and inject it right to the root zones. So this is gonna be fantastic. Uh, we're gonna get a lot, of, uh, a lot of good harvest out of this thing, I'm sure hoping. But 200 gallons per hour, so man, I'm good to go. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this timer right here. Now this is a DIG BO9D. I have used these things for years and I absolutely love them. Now the nice thing about this timer is I can put a good quality nine volt in it and I won't have to change it out all season. Now I will take it out at the end of the season in the fall. This thing will last the entire time. Let me show you how it works. If I hit mode right here, it's gonna ask me how long I want it to water. And so I've got it set up to 30 minutes, that's good. So I'm gonna hit this arrow here. You can change it to hours. You can, you can water this thing as long as you like, nine hours, 99 minutes if you want, I think. But we're good there, so I'm gonna hit mode one more time. And now it's gonna ask me what day I want it to water. Right now it's set to water seven days a week with all those black deals. So I'm gonna go through here and I can hit this arrow here and I can hit minus and I can take a day out. And so now I'm going to hit mode again. The next thing that's going to come up is our start time, what time we want it to water. Now I've got my tropical garden set to water around 6.30, so I think I'm going to set my vegetable garden. I'm going to have it water around 5.30 in the morning. Since I'm on two totally separate zones, I can water the vegetable garden and then the tropical garden will kick in and I won't be hurting my pressure. So we got that set. Uh, you can set up to three other times. I'm going to leave those off for now. There we go. So now I'm going to set the time. 1.32 p.m. And today is Tuesday. There we go. We're set. Now, when you want to just turn this thing on, if you want to go ahead and give it some water, you can hit this on button right here. You heard that little click there. It's showing you that it's on. Hit this off button here and turn it off. The other thing I can do is press and hold this off button and if we're having rain, if it's raining, I can actually turn this thing off and you can see right there, it gives you a little slash through your water and it tells you it's not gonna turn on again until you come back over here and turn it on. And there we go. A dandy piece of engineering right there, I love it. When you go to put your fertigator on or your fertilizer injector of any kind, they always recommend that you do it downstream of anything else you're going to put in, whether it's pressure regulators, backflows, filters, timers. Make this the last thing. That way when that pressure hits it, there ain't nothing between this and your emitters. So I'm going to get this on now. I like the fact that they give you lots of tubing on this too, so I can move that fertigator pretty much anywhere in this area here, kind of get it out of the way. The other thing I'm going to do for now is I'm going to turn these valves off. That way it's not sucking air. Before I fire all this up, I'm going to fill that thing up with water though, so that it's, so that it's definitely not sucking air. And now we come to the end game. Make sure she's good and seated. Maybe give it a half turn backwards and then send her on home there. Now, I might have mentioned earlier, I bought four of these four foot diameter rings that are identical to the other, the oval raised beds. I'm going to have these in here, but what I'm going to do at this point right here is I'm going to put this T in and I'm going to run a line straight across. And that way I can 
take care of both lanes of beds. Uh, I'm just going to tee it in, run another line over and elbow it. But I'm going to go ahead and put the tee in and then finish this row here and then I'll start on that one. Okay, we've made it to the end of the line here. Put a termination cap on here. I'm going to do that right there. There we go. Wiggle her on. The nice thing about these termination caps with the uh, threads is you could always hook on and continue on real easy. There we go. Well, I am happy to announce that the main line is done. I allowed some extra tubing to come over for the round planters that I'm going to be filling up here pretty soon. I'll be doing a video on that. I'm going to take that mulch out and get a torch out and I'll burn the, uh, the landscape fabric underneath it and burn a hole there and put cardboard in and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, and I will come back through with some mulch and cover these lines here. But the next thing we're going to need to do now, oh yeah, <laughs> now as the sun heats this tubing up, it's going to actually lay this stuff down uh, and it'll, it'll soak that memory right out of it uh, with the heat. I threw a chair over here on this one just so it wouldn't move around on me while I was uh, getting everything set up. What I need to do now though is I need to uncap my end caps and I need to flush these lines out real good. And another thing is when you have multiple bed lines like I do, if I wanted to, I could have actually put in a, uh, they sell these little ball valves, so you can shut off flow to certain beds if you wanted to. I could have put one in over there and kept the water off of these other beds. I really don't need to do that, I don't think, so I'm not going to do that, but that is an option for you. A little ball valve. Well, now that we got that out of the way, what do you say we put in some emitters? <laughs> I'm going to use a hole punch tool designed especially for this half inch mainline tubing. And the nice thing about these is they've already got, got the deals. You just pop the hole in and pop these in and you're good to go. Let's try it out. Now I'm going to start over here in the carrot bed because they like lots of water when they're germinating. When you use one of these little punch tools, you'll notice it's got the, the deal in here to make the perfect punch hole right there. And so I'm just going to take uh, two emitters, kind of space them out here and pop them in. If you ever screw up, they do make goof plugs, which is good to know. <laughs> Once you got your hole made, you just pop this thing in there. And there we go. I got little carrot heads sticking up, but they're not completely germinated yet. So I'm going to put that bad boy right there. And then I'm going to put another one. I want that one right about there. So.
here we go let's turn it on and now and see what it looks like I may have to do some adjusting here you can turn this thing way up or way down that's the nice thing about this so we can get a little bit of overlapping covers I got a lot of wind today too but there we go These carrots, they like a lot of water when they're germinating. And the other thing that I'm going to have to do is once I, uh, once I get all of the other emitters in, it's actually going to change the throw for all of my previous emitters. So one, one thing you can do is just set up all your emitters where you want them and then come back through and make these adjustments. But I got a lot, a lot of room and play there with these. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is not something I'd necessarily want to do for the squash, the zucchini, and maybe even the tomatoes. Now, once the tomatoes get a little bit bigger and I've got them pruned up, the stem, yeah, it'd probably be okay. But you notice it's a really soft throw on the water when you adjust it. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to take water out from the main line to wherever you want it. All you need is the quarter inch drip tubing. You need some connectors single connectors and then of course some drip emitters now the nice thing about using the quarter inch tubing is i can actually do container plants right next to the raised beds and all i have to do is run a line over uh, off of the main line this is the uh, barb connectors that you're going to use this is going to go into the main line then into the hose and then of course you got another barb on your emitter here if the main line is running right next to a plant you don't even need this you can just pop a hole in and pop this in and then adjust the settings there I use these T-connections under my patio with my hanging baskets. That way I can run, I can just uh, basically staple up drip tubing all along the uh, top side and then come down with a brand new line and a drip emitter for each basket. Works pretty good for that as well. Now one thing I absolutely assure you of is these things do not like going in there and that makes for a really tight connection. But you can, you, you can do it by fingers. It's a little bit rough. It's a lot easier if you get a pair of pliers and just kind of hold on to that center piece right there. We're just going to wiggle that thing in until she goes. And you might want to do a little twisting action as well. There we go. Got it. And then you just decide how much uh, length you want. I like using the pliers with the little cutters on there because then I don't have to have multiple tools and cut that bad boy off like so. Usually the emitters will go on a little bit easier. This thing looks like it's really wide though. Let's see here. I don't want to use the pliers on this because I don't want to tear it up. So I'm just going to twist it on and keep twisting until I know she's up over it. And we're good. There we are. And then the other thing you can do is you can actually get you some of these little holders right here, little stakes. These are designed for quarter inch tubing and then you can actually stake in the ground and keep it right there. Okay, we got it all set up. Let's fire it up and see how the flow goes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the where both lines terminate. And I'm going to make adjustments on both of these. And then I'm going to work my way forward. And I can see right here I'm spraying over a pretty good bit. So I'm going to move this thing here. Get it over there. And then dial it back a little. The thing is, is if I reduce anything on upstream, this is going to get more powerful too. So it's a, it's a back and forth kind of play around with it and see what you got kind of deal, you know. You're just going to have to work at it here. I know that I'm very dry on the far end of this bed. So I may move this one up just a hair, like so, or even up in altitude, just slightly. You can even rotate this thing to get that spray pattern right where you want it there. I think I can live with that there. 
<laughs> Even Kate's gonna think I done wet my britches. I just wet my plants. Well, there we go, folks. We got everything set up, ready to go. Everything gonna get water. I guess I ought to turn those on now. <laughs> oh, peas, peas do. Peas do. <sighs> that took about seven or eight hours uh, from start to finish and getting the emitters in. Not too bad. Good day's work. <laughs> But the nice thing is, is now the garden is going to be on autopilot. That means we could go on vacation, whatever. It's definitely going to get water and it's not going to get, if we had to go away for a week or two, we're not going to come back to death and destruction. So that's great. <laughs> Guys, if you found this helpful, can I ask you for a favor? Would you mind sharing this video? It helps with the algorithm on YouTube. More people get to see it. Uh, it's more important than ever that everybody that can grow food, grow food in your backyard, your front yard. Heck, I don't care. If, go in your closet if you got a light. Now, seriously, times are about to get really rough, I fear. And the ability to grow your food is going to be everything. It's going to give you a lot of security. I think it's important that everybody learn how to grow their own food, deal with water. The nice thing about this is I could actually get some 55-gallon drums. I could set them up high, and then I could do gravity flow to this entire garden bed. I just have to hook in over there. So that is outstanding. But guys, we really do appreciate it when you subscribe. Click the bell notification, and you'll be notified when we upload new videos. And of course, uh, the thumbs up and the share do really, really help with the algorithm. The other thing YouTube does is they take a look at how long somebody watches your video, too. So when you turn that thing on, even if you got to go do something, just let it roll, because <laughs> it helps us with YouTube. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time, and happy growing.